you. You, I mean, you're a former standout athlete. Uh, you're now coaching your boys. You've coached college football, so you've you've been on on both sides of this apparel of this apparel deal. You you've worn it. You've seen it from a coaching perspective. Is there a difference? Is there a difference between Nike and Adidas? Between Adidas and Under Armour? Between Nike and Under Armour? Or and just talking quality right now? Or quality wise, are they all comparable? I think they all have their own um, look, distinct look, and I, I, I don't think it matters as far as what you wear. As, as it, it's, it really comes down to what you do while you wear those uniforms. I mean, I don't think Michigan's uniforms are um, as attractive as they used to be with the Nike a uh, long time ago. Um, but at the same time, we live in a different era, and – it's a copycat world. So when you see, uh, let's say, a, a, a team like Oregon have a bunch of uniforms, you know, everybody wants to keep up with the latest and greatest. But I think as far as quality, um, no, nah, I think that uh, Adidas has a nice-looking uniform. So does Nike and so does Under Armour. Uh, but, but I don't think you should make a big deal about it. I just think a lot of people have uh, – uh, associated losing with Adidas as far as football is. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, hey, you know what? Is. We've we've heard we've heard that from some fans on the show. Uh, others just think it's an aesthetic thing, and and that Nike just looks better, uh, like you said. But there are some that make the argument, and this is what I this is what I can't speak to, Marcus. I mean, I, I have Climalite, I have you know some Nike gear, I have Under Armour, the the you know the you know the workout clothing and it's not obviously is not the extent to which a team would use this stuff but that doesn't seem to I haven't noticed much of a difference and I'm wondering as a as an athlete and as a coach whether you've noticed a difference between the, the material the quality of the material the quality of the the apparel from from that perspective well I think the under armor uh sets the sets the standard as far as the workout gear I mean there's, there was something about that tight fit shirt that you know it, it was just new school it was fresh and uh when you look at how clothing itself changes nothing is loose anymore as far as athletics are concerned I mean, even basketball jerseys are kind of you know hugging you up a lot more uh but i think as far as the quality man um i would say the nike jersey might have the best appeal on the outside mm-hmm. but i think the adidas probably has better material really the under armor yeah like uh i remember when i was at central and they were going from new balance to adidas and you know it all depends on i think the colors of your uniform and uh the design man i mean adidas is right up there with the top of them but I think Adidas had a great quality as far as their material, but Under Armour probably had the most flash and flair, and they're probably more workout gear than they are football jerseys or basketball jerseys. But I think Under Armour shoes and Under Armour, like it says, should have just kind of stayed in that lane. I mean, I know they're trying yeah, to and, and see you bring up you now you bring up a, what what might be a distinguishing characteristic, and that's the shoes. Now I will say. That I've noticed, I haven't. I've never owned Under Armour shoes, so I can't speak to Under Armour shoes. But I have noticed the difference between Nike and Adidas shoes. So when the athletes, when the athletes at Michigan, because they poll them and, and they ask them, "What would you prefer?" and they say Nike, is that is that an aesthetic thing? Because it doesn't sound like, based on your experience as an athlete as as a coach, it's not a quality of material thing. So is it purely aesthetic, or or might it be a difference with the shoes? Because I, I've noticed a difference with the shoes. I think it's more uh, aesthetic because I think Nike has the reputation and a lot of teams that are winning wear Nike still. And, uh, you know, I think the Michigan fan base in general wasn't very receptive to the Nike, I mean, to the Adidas switch. Um, in the first place so they want to go back to what they had a lot of those kids that are coming up now probably don't remember the nike jerseys or the uniforms as well but man um when it comes down to those shoes 
I thought Adidas had better shoes. You um, wow, Marcus. What? Yeah. <laughs> really? I used to like some of those designs, man. They had like five or six different pair, the low cut, the, the maze in the, on the tip or the all maze and the blue with the little. Wow. And I thought the Adidas cleats. I mean, I the think the RG3s. Nike, I think Nike shoes are better in general, but I think the Adidas cleats, cleats. by gotcha. design gotcha. were just, just on a whole nother level. I think they did Michigan's uniforms a favor. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I understand where you're coming from, where you're coming from now. Cause you know, again, uh, apparel wise, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, I've noticed no difference in the material, but I have noticed a difference in the shoes. So, okay. So Marcus, one of the things that we like to have you do is to, you know, play the, like we did in the coaching search, you, we had, we put you in the seat, we put you in the, in the decision maker seat. So let's, let's do that again. You're sitting down, you met with all three apparel companies, right? And I'm just going to give you some some scenarios. I'm not saying that these scenarios are true. These are just considerations I want you to take into take into account. So uh, Under Armour, or let's let's start with Nike. Nike is what your student athletes want. It's what your coaches want. It's what the majority of your fans want. But they're offering you the least amount of money, and they aren't necessarily selling. They, they aren't necessarily courting you in the same way that the, they're courting you, but not with the same vigor that maybe the other two are. It, maybe they come at you more like, hey, we're Nike. If you want to come with us, cool. If you don't, that's cool, too. Uh, then you have Under Armour, who's offering you more money than Nike. They're, they they want to put you up on a pedestal. Uh, they have some flashy gear. They, they've they've kind of carved out a niche in the market. But with, as you said, the, the, the Under Armour gear, when they uh, when they burst onto the scene, but they might have a little issue servicing some of your some of your other teams. They can they can farm that out. Well, you know, you can work through it, uh, but they might have some issues, especially when it comes to the shoes. And then you have Adidas, who, uh, you know, is not going to be outbid. They're going to offer you the most money. They they put that on the table for you. Uh, but you have uh, you have some fan. Your fan base doesn't want the majority of your fan base doesn't want to stay with Adidas. Your your student athletes don't want to stay with Adidas. Uh, and there's a perception out there amongst some that there's a quality difference, even if you don't believe that yourself. So uh, what would you do if with all of those things, let's say, you know, Adidas was offering you 20 to 25 percent more than Nike and and Under Armour was somewhere in between? What would you do? Who would you go with? Well, if I was Jim Harbaugh and I was a decision maker, Wait, you're Jim Hackett. Was, you're Jim Hackett. Jim Hackett is I'm making this call. I'm sorry. Yeah, if I'm if I'm if I'm Jim Hackett, you know that J H kind of got me. Um, I'm I'm looking at the future. I'm looking at what the people want. Uh, initially, all right, be, be, because I understand that Adidas was already paying Michigan probably the most out of all the schools that were under contract with Adidas, Michigan was right at the top to become the poster child for that top dog. So, uh, and they're saying, they're saying they'll do that again. They're saying they'll, they'll make them, this is what, I mean, this is the, the scenario I'm laying out for you. I have, this is one part I'm actually hearing is true that they're going to not be, they're saying they're not going to be outbid. They're saying they're going to make Michigan the, you know, they're going to make them the most lucrative offer out there, period. Oh yeah. And see, uh, Jim Hackett also knows that Michigan sells a lot of apparel. I mean, you can go back to the Fab Five and see, you know, regardless, you know, they were wearing Nike and all of that that we picked up. Michigan's going to sell apparel. I, I kind of don't – I kind of believe it doesn't matter which brand it is. It's just that uh, when you look at the big picture, recruiting, what do the recruits want? Because those are the kids that when they come in, if they, if they, if you give them what they want, uh, I'm talking about over the next few classes. Um, if they want Nike, then um, I think you you give them what they want because money is not really the issue with Michigan. I mean, Michigan's not hurting for money, but Michigan does like to be in a class by itself uh, as far as uh, being the uh, top dollar school on your roster. But Michigan also takes pride in the uniforms look a certain way and selling a certain amount of apparel. I, I don't think Under Armour has a real shot, so they come into third place because uh, 
to me, Under Armour, Nike, I mean, Under Armour and Adidas really just kind of aren't on the same level traditionally with um, Nike. So that sounds like what everybody wants. And even though you're leaving money on, even though you're leaving money on the table with, with Nike. Yeah, because I think you would get the money on the back end because you would sell more. On the royalties. I got you. Yeah, because as a consumer, um, you're not going to like you're going to spend on stuff that you want. We all do. So if Michigan is getting taken care of by Adidas, that doesn't necessarily mean that the fans are going to go and spend money on all of that. Michigan's going to get theirs, but the fan is not going to get theirs, so to speak. So if Michigan, their athletes, their fans get what they want even though it's for less money by Nike as compared to Adidas, then Michigan, I think, will still make the same, if not more, off the sales instead of the contract. So so, so let me, let me see if I understand you correctly. You think that Michigan fans will buy Michigan gear regardless of, of, of the apparel provider on, on a certain level, but if it's Nike, that they'll buy even more? Yes, exactly right. Because you're giving the people what they want. I mean, life is a people business. So, at the end of the day, if if somebody doesn't want a, a big net, you know, there's a certain amount of people that like them, but then they're saying, man, y'all need to bring back the such and such. And if you bring it back, then you're servicing the people, and people will buy more. Even though some of those sandwiches are two for five now, uh, it's like, that's that's a ploy to get them to buy more because that's what people want. So you got to understand that when it comes to that merchandise, the school can take a hit from, let's use a school like Ohio State. They're still with Nike. Uh, they're not hurting at all as far as their sales are concerned. So it's not really about what Nike's paying Ohio State. It's about uh, how many millions of people have went out and bought that brand which makes Ohio State more money on the backside of the front side. Got you. We're talking to Marcus Ray here on the Michigan Insider on Sports Talk 1050, WTKA online at WTK.com. Marcus, one of the things you, you mentioned recruiting, if you give the recruits what they want, uh, it's it is going to help uh, lure guys in. Uh, you know, there's been some panic among the fan base when it comes to uh, Michigan not – experiencing the number of early commitments that they that they anticipated when Jim Harbaugh signed on. There are a lot of folks that thought that uh, it was going to be this immediate thing, that, you know, Harbaugh is here uh, and it's Michigan, and so kids are going to just be beating down the door. It, it was my contention from the beginning that, hey, you know, Jim Harbaugh is outstanding. He's going to open even more doors for Michigan, but it's still going to take some time to build relationships and it's going to take some time for for it's going to be a wait and see to see how they do on the football field. Is there cause for concern uh, beyond that, Marcus? Like some fans are showing, or is this, or is it just a matter of time where people, you know, these kids just don't know the Michigan that that won all those games when you played, and they they're just waiting to see if Michigan is going to be that Michigan again. Well, if you build it, they'll come. And, and Michigan hasn't even built one win yet under Jim Harbaugh. It's all. Um, excitement, hope, people, you know, wishing and expecting certain uh, you Michigan football to be a certain way. But you got you to gotta, you gotta realize those top dog recruits that everybody wants, they're more wait and see. These kids nowadays look at it as if they're doing Michigan a favor versus Michigan doing them a favor. So if I'm the number one defensive end in the country, um, you know, Michigan used to get their pick – they're, they used to hand pick those kind of guys. Now they they, they hope to land two or three. Um, so those kids nowadays, with all the exposure, with all the camps, the social media, those recruits, those top recruits, are treated like royalty before they even bust one grape at the collegiate level. So they're already prima donnas. I don't care how they act, how modest they are. In their minds, when you start to put hats on and do all the uh, dog and pony show on signing day. You think you're you think you're better than you are. So we live in a world that has catered and coddled all those 18 year olds, and now they think they're bigger than the school. And um, so they don't really they're not that impressed that Jim Harbaugh is the coach because they in the last 20 years Michigan hasn't really done much. So they're saying, yeah, you got a great coach. He still has to prove himself at Michigan. I mean, uh, and so it's not going to be an overnight process. 
um, uh, even those classes that Michigan used to get back to back to back, you know, it still it still took time for those relationships to get developed. Uh, Michigan grandfathered coaches, so they were able to keep some of those relationships. But I think everybody's still waiting to see. Also, I don't think a lot of top recruits are entertained by the fact that there's people that are now leaving the program or uh, there's transfers. Michigan hasn't had this many transfers ever. I mean, there was a time well, when, when, Michigan, when, when, when what about? I think they had some. They had a decent number of transfers when Rich came in. Well, and they didn't win either. So, but there was a long, a long history of Michigan doing two things. They didn't accept. I ain't talking about people leaving the program. I'm talking about guys. Ah, coming got, into the got program. you, got you, got you, got so, you. Got you. So, so you got uh, Michigan didn't really accept very many transfers, and two, they probably had one JUCO player in the uh, ever, and that was Russell Shaw. They had so they that, had one. Rich had one too. Austin Panner. Those are the only two I know of. Well, see, there was one in the '80s of, that I can't remember his name. Okay. All right, so like, I'm kind of going back further back because Rich's era to me is kind of was like where it all started over. It's like the new Michigan showed up, and it's not his fault. It's just things start looking different for whatever, for whatever reason. I'm talking about pre pre Rich. Mm-hmm. Michigan had built itself on. They recruit and get who they want. They don't need to transfer. Uh, and a lot of guys, um, uh, top end guys that were on your roster didn't leave because those who stayed were champions. Like we, like we actually lived it. The Jamie Morris's, the Mike T's, and everybody else that was a part of that. They actually lived it. So I think these top recruits are saying, "Look, I'm not that special to Jim Harbaugh. I'm." I'm just another pretty girl at the prom, and if I turn him down, then he's going to go to the next one and ask her to go. And, 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 and matter of fact, if I do go, he might double date on me. So you got to understand, <laughs> like, these top recruits, they want to feel like, you know, even though some of them aren't afraid of competition, but if I'm a big-time quarterback, why would I go to Michigan when there's seven of them just like that waiting and somebody's not going to eat and they're going to transfer? you got to understand we we don't live in a world where everybody's looking at the team concept and embrace competition. Oh, you know, some of these kids are a little softer, and they'll say, no, nah, I'm not going there, and they got three, four-star, five-star quarterbacks. What about me? Or, I mean, so you just got to understand that Jim ain't, he's not going to wow people right now. Everybody wants to wait and see. And the more exposure you get, sometimes it becomes intimidating. Sometimes it turns into a situation where a big time recruit would think me and this guy might not get along. Um, well, so, can it can it can it just be and, and and tell me if I'm wrong, Marcus? I, can it also just be that maybe they just don't know Jim Harbaugh yet? Uh, and obviously, obviously, Michigan hasn't been Marcus Ray's Michigan since for a long time. I mean, you just said it. Michigan hasn't won like that since you were here or since '03 when they. You know when they, uh, you know, went to won that Big Ten crown and and knocked off Ohio State in that big fat or 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 oh six. I mean, it's been a long time. These kids they haven't seen Michigan win like that. So they've seen Ohio State win like that. They've seen Michigan State win like that. So they don't have that. They they can't associate. They can't associate Michigan with the kind of success that a lot of us who have that recollection can. It, can it can it just be that simple that they don't know Jim Harbaugh yet and they haven't seen Michigan win yet? I say yes. That's probably at the forefront. Um, uh, that's probably the lead thoughts that, that those kids are having. But think about this, though, too. Most people don't understand it's changed. Years ago, you played for the school. That's why you, like, you didn't really care who the coach was. You played for the school because normally the school you liked had a coach that was there for a long time. So I didn't grow up saying I wanted to play for Bo Schimbeckler. I wanted to play for Michigan. I didn't know Bo Schimbeckler until I got a little, like, until I understood who he was, like, probably in high school. I was like, oh, all right. But, see, by the time I got to high school, Gary Moeller was the coach. But I heard about Schimbeckler, but I actually, like, had a chance to – put my fingers and my hands on Michigan football in, in the early 90s when Moeller was the coach. So I didn't change and say, well, I'm going to the Buckeyes because both Schimbeckler retired. So my point is, these kids nowadays are playing for the coach and not the school. You're not going to Ohio State because, of, because you like Ohio State. You're going because you want to play for Urban Meyer. And I think at this level, 
uh, Jim Harbaugh probably commands that respect, but he just hasn't done it at this school. It's too new. I think I think the fan base are expecting overnight results, and everybody's supposed to feel like the most loyal fan feels. Oh, Jim's here. We're going to get guys. We're going to – yeah, that sounds good, but you got to understand it's going to take some time for that. And there are other places right now. There are other schools that are more attractive than Michigan and when it comes to college football. They, they put a better product on the field. They've had better coaches. So it's not the same. Michigan can't just show up and push everybody around psychologically or on the field, and now everybody's on to it. Michigan used to show up and wipe everybody out. They were up 14 points as soon as they put the helmet on. It's not like that. Now I think they're down 10 points, and, 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 and they've got to even a score and get people to respect them again, the helmets, the stadium, all of that. So everything's improved. The facilities are top flight in the country, but they don't scare anybody anymore. You got a type flight, top flight coach. Nobody's really intimidated because everybody else is better. And Michigan's not the only one that, that was that's wearing Nike or looking good or, or has all the top uh, apparel. Everybody's catching up to them. And when things are even, like the defensive back, when they're even, they're leaving. So understand, Jim's got some work to do. Winning cures all, but his rivals, they've got it going on right now, whether we like it or not. That's the state of reality we are in the Big Ten and in nationally in college football. Gotcha. All right. So Marcus, one, one more some reorganization. Uh, you know, at, at the you know at the administrative level for Michigan, they're gonna be pulling uh, Soup Campbell over to recruiting, uh, mainly with his primary focus being the state of Michigan. You know how how much do you think that'll 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 help them? Uh. I think it'll help. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know if they'll get the results they're looking for. Uh, but Soup is proven. Um, but I think Soup did the majority of his work in Michigan a long time ago when he was getting guys like Larry Foot out of Detroit. Soup can recruit, and, and and the thing about him, I I I just think that you know he hasn't been at Michigan for a long time since 2007. Um, recruiting is different now. It's just it's just everything's changing. It's the days of uh, going to somebody's high school game and watching them play and establish a relationship with their parents and with that with that play student athlete. Um, it's, it's changing a little bit now, you know. And and uh, you know, I think once Soup learn, learns the ropes and uh, he uh, establishes the relationship, especially um, in Southeast Michigan and uh, where Southeast Michigan and up in Flint. Uh, you know, Soup did a great job of recruiting those two areas, Saginaw, Flint, and Detroit. Hopefully those areas can still produce top-flight talent year in and year out um, beyond Cass Tech guys um, because the, I think a pipeline is already there, so it's not much work you have to do there. But uh, Soup, you know, Soup's he's a coach by trade, and he's been in the game long enough to speak the language, to understand uh, which elbows he needs to rub and, and, and how to deal with um, – how to deal with and recruit and relate to uh, some of those areas and some of those players and parents. I think Soup will be fine. Um, Soup has to uh, – I, I think what will help Soup uh, is Coach Campbell. What will help him is if Michigan wins. See, because I don't care how much of a dynamic recruiter you are, it's hard to sell a product that ain't really at the top. It's just hard to do it, especially to a top-flight kid. So once Michigan starts winning – Michigan will recruit itself again, and then you start sending out people like Eric Campbell wherever you want, and he can go get those guys. But uh, Eric Campbell had a long history of recruiting great uh, players, not only from Michigan, but from all over the place. And, but I think what I think to go with his personality, um, the fact that he coached, he was a, he was a. It benefited Eric Campbell when he was a wide receiver coach recruiting as well. It's going to be a little different when he's recruiting, but he's not coaching those guys when they mm -hmm. get here. So I, I think that's going to play a little role too. But I think the way Jim has set his staff up in certain positions uh, is, is so he can slide people around. Let's say when the wide, if the wide receiver job opens up in a year or two, I think T.J. Weeks or uh, Eric Campbell can slide right into it without any big turnover. So um, Eric Campbell's going to be fine. You know, he's a Michigan man. He knows football. He's a people person. So I, I think that's going to help Michigan. I mean, it's, it's going to help Michigan in, in the state of Michigan. But Michigan also has to win and make Eric Campbell's job a lot easier to win the state back over for Michigan State. Gotcha. All right. Good stuff as always, Mr. Ray. 
Uh, I already told people where they can get their hands on Rays of Light, but why don't you remind them? You can pick up Rays of Light Volume 1 and 2 from the MDN, MDN.com, Amazon.com. You can email me, mray29 at gmail.com. Um, be on the lookout for that Volume 3. Uh, we're looking at late August, somewhere around the Utah game, hopefully. Uh, should have a book signing and a whole lot of things going on. Uh, during that time, but uh, Raise the Lighter here, man. Volume three is, is going to be the, uh, probably some of the best pieces. Of, it's going to be probably the best piece of literature you read in 2015, maybe in the last ten years, as far as new releases. See, uh, see, but, see, 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 Marcus. See, I hear you say that, and then I hear you say, "I'm telling my kids, hey, don't be talking, don't don't be out there talking smack, don't be out there talking about how good you are." But you just see that's that type of mentality that you just exhibited. That you just say, hey, this is going to be the best thing you read in 2015. Not John U. Bacon. This is going to be Marcus Ray. That's going to be the best thing you read. See, now, Marcus, that's what you need to be in partner upon your, your your boys, man. That's what I want to hear from them. Yeah, well, the only, comp- the only competition you have is with yourself. And so I, I, that, that has been Ah, uh, here we go. So, so look, Sam, that, that's never left me. To my heart, I'm still a competitor, and I'm a trash talker. I just, I just say it a little differently. I, I, I talk trash in a politically correct kind of way. Now, but, uh, now you do. Now you've got me uh, going back to Columbus and, 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 and getting my kids mentally uh, popping off and, and saying stuff. Now everybody's mind. Yeah, so, so, the guy, so the guy who was on the sideline and told Joe Paterno, shut up, old man, is telling his kids, oh, no, just – Go out there and sing Kumbaya after after the game. Come on, Marcus. Come no, on, man. no. Hey, they're so young right now. I'm just gonna hold. I'm just gonna hold them because when they go to these camps in the next five years and they're killing everybody and they're popping off, I, I just don't want that to rub some of these coaches the wrong way. Let's, <laughs> we're just gonna get there first. And we're just gonna have a lot to say. And I'm talking about all of them. So I'm just training them a little differently. Me, I didn't have any training. My mom was. You know, she she just couldn't hold me down. I was gonna pop off. Plus, I I grew up in a rough neighborhood, and, and that's how you had to survive. But um, but not this book is gonna be special. Um, it really talks about just just illuminating the mind in the first part, so that on the outside you can you 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 can shine and have that joy because those those are the two definitions two definitions of radiance: illumination and joy. So that the inner controls the outer. So I, I'm just really going show people how to get their mind right in, in various ways. And this book is going to be one to remember. So just be on the lookout in a couple of months. Give me some more time with that. And uh, I appreciate the platform, fellas. All right, Marcus. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate you as always.